Good evening. At this time, I'll call the meeting of the Marshall City Council to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. We do have an agenda before us. Are there any changes to that agenda? If not, um, the council is uh, continuing to meet under uh, uh, COVID guidelines. So a portion of the council is present at the emergency response uh, center, the merit center in Marshall. And a portion of the council is attending by distance. So I will call on city clerk, Kyle Box to take the roll. Mayor Burns. Here. Craig Schaefer. Here. Steve Meister. Here. John Edmund. Here. John Kramer. Here. Russ Labatt. Here. Jim Lazinski. Here. And the council is all present. We'll then move to the uh, agenda item number two, which is considered approval of the minutes of the work session and the regular meeting. Both were held on February 23rd. The council does have the minutes of both of those meetings. Are there any corrections? Move to approve. Motion by, motion by Steve, seconded by John. Discussion? If Mr. not, Mayor, we'll... Yes? Uh, on page 15, there was a motion made and seconded, but the, the person that made the second was not mentioned in the minutes. Kyle, you'll, you'll correct that, make that note. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Any other uh, discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote, Kyle. Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Lapat? Yes. Jim Lazinski? Yes. And the motion passes. Agenda item number three is a public hearing. This is a public hearing regarding a home property tax abatement request. Um, we'll conduct the public hearing. Following the public hearing, we'll con consider the resolution that would approve the home property tax abatement. Kyle, I'll call on you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On February 23rd, a public hearing was called by the city council uh, to be held tonight uh, under Minnesota state statute. Uh, the information uh, regarding the information on the properties included in the council packet. This property is located at 1203 Windstar Road uh, with an estimated market value of 835600 with the difference of improvement being 775600 uh, The approximate amount of assistance is included in the, in the memo. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. As part of the public hearing, are there any questions or input? And this is consistent with the city of Marshall um, policy on property tax abatement. Correct. Any questions or input? If not, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll motion make a motion to close. close. Second. Motion, motion by John, seconded by Jim to close the public hearing discussion. If not, uh, <clears throat> city clerk Kyle Box, would you take the vote? Mayor Byrne? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Jim Lazinski? Yes. And the motion does pass. We'll now consider the resolution that would approve the property tax abatement. Any questions about the resolution? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Jim, seconded by Russ to approve the resolution as presented. Discussion? If not, Kyle? Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Jim Lozinski? Yes. And the motion passes. <clears throat> we'll move then to agenda item number four which will be considered the award for bids for the construction of a restroom facility and the picnic pavilion at Patriot Park. We have uh, received the bids. Um, uh, Preston, are you gonna present this? I'll call on uh, Preston Stensrew to present the recommendation. Preston, um, superintendent of the park system. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, 
tonight is a continuation of um, construction, replacing, um, in this case, not replacing, but uh, new construction, but uh, new bathrooms in the city of Marshall parks. Um, years ago when we did survey um, on stuff to improve in the parks department, bathrooms were by far number one uh, um, concern of needed improvement. Um, so we've done just this park, we've done um, Liberty Park, which is a new construction. And last year we did the replacement at Freedom Park, um, which brings us to the fourth one, um, which would be a little bit different than any of them we've done before because um, out in this new development, um, we currently don't have a bathroom or a shelter house. Um, so I feel the most efficient way is to build one structure, um, which would be a, a bathroom um, men's and women's facility on the north side of the building. Um, with kind of a corridor between the bathrooms. Um, and then the south, um, two thirds of the building would be an open shelter house. Um, we did do all the drawings internally. That's why I didn't uh, you know, put any pictures on here um, to try and keep the cost low and not get architect and stuff involved. Um, but it does end up being um, about a 36 by 56 foot structure to the roof edge, that's counting overhang. Um, two stalls in each, men's and women's, um, a mechanical room, and then a little storage closet. Um, and then the shelter house part of it is uh, approximately 30 by 36. Um, and that would allow um, approximately eight picnic tables. There'd be a serving counter, um, outlets for miscellaneous crock pots, stuff like that for hosting picnics. Um, it, it would match all of our other um, bathrooms we've made with the brick, the steel, the green steel roof, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> and then right now we currently have a porta potty out there that sits in the parking lot that we just pay a weekly fee. Um, so this would eliminate that plus um, give us another shelter to rent out, which um, generates a small bit of revenue. But uh, with the, the area out there growing and continuing to grow into the future, um, I hope it we've sized this adequately to allow for growth. It's probably, you know, right now I kind of thought if it's a little oversized, but I think it's easier to build it a little bigger than be too small five years down the road. Um, and the cost savings was not much, you know, into just several thousand dollars was about it. Um, so we did go for bids. Um, we got two bids. Normally we had been getting three, but one contractor um, just said they're booked for the summer and they just strictly can't meet the timelines of this project and didn't want to commit to it. Um, Blad Home Construction was the low bid um, in the amount of $188,886. Um, they did have in their bid, I kind of allowed a, an alternate for installation of sewer and water lines. Um, and I have opted to just hire DNG directly um, in that amount of the $19,685. Um, and we'll coordinate with Gladham Construction um, to get that all in and where it needs to be um, together. Um, also, we would have MMU um, would assist us since it's a city project and bringing power up to the um, shelter and restroom um, for just under $1,000. So I've included that in the total price, um, pretty significant cost savings versus hiring that done. A um, couple hundred feet of conduit to be bored in and then like 200 amp service and stuff like that. Um, which brings us to a net price um, of $209,571. That's construction and um, all the finished work, utilities and stuff like that. Um, just like in the past projects, um, our staff will do the final um, grading and seeding and uh, backfilling and stuff around it. Um, Kelly, the Minnesota Green Corps member, has also drawn up a design to implement a rain garden on the north side of this um, as part of the Green Corp stuff. Um, we have that all planned and been working with Greenwood Nursery, but it would not be funded out of this. It would just be out of um, park maintenance. Um, so we'd, we'd hope to implement that after construction. Um, just wanted to give you kind of a heads up on that. Um, so the recommendation would be to um, proceed in award to Blight Home Construction um, in the amount of the 188. 886. Also um, proceed with DNG installing the sewer and water line with the city paying DNG directly in for $19,685. And then the roughly $1,000 to MMU once 
they install. That's just materials cost uh, for a total of 209,571. I believe there's 215,000 in the CIP to complete this project. Okay, thank you, Preston, and thank you for your work on this. Questions for Preston? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Steve. So Preston, is this, you know, we've talked in the past about these, the vandalism that's occurred in our restrooms at our parks, and we'd previously discussed uh, this newfangled um, bathroom that's less susceptible to uh, vandalism. Is that putting that in here? Or is this putting a regular bathroom in? Um, no, it would be just like the other ones. The doors lock automatically at night um, at 1030 and the lights shut <clears> off in the bathrooms. Um, the lights in the shelter house part of it and kind of around the soffit would be on during the night only for more so security. Um, and then they, they, the door is on lock and the lights turn on in the bathrooms at 7 or 7.30 in the morning. We can program it to whatever we want. It has cut down on vandalism significantly. We had one instance at Freedom last year. I'm not sure if it happened during the day, but they actually took the light fixtures right off the ceiling. Um, they left them there. It's just we had to put them back up. Um, but other than that, we've had no vandalism at any of the other new bathrooms. Thank you. Other questions for Preston? Yes, Preston. Uh, Bladholm is holding their price. They didn't have a clause in their contract that if we don't approve this, like in a week or two, that they're, and I'm not saying we're not going to, but that their cost doesn't go up. Because I know lumber is not, is not a stable market right now and it's not going down. Uh, nope, I didn't see anything like that in the bid um, or the, yeah, the bid package. I believe it said uh, the prices had to be held for, 60 days or maybe it's 30 but either way we're in that we're in that window and uh um, I, I was initially planning to bring to the last council meeting and i talked to greg about waiting two weeks until this meeting and he's he was comfortable with that so then the do, other question plan. i have is i see you have as a july 1st finish date and i'm going to speak on behalf of the contractor here how firm are we on that because he may have trouble getting material there's certain materials out there right now that we cannot get and I'll use I OSB as one of them. You can't get OSB. Okay. I, I would say we'd be flexible on that. I, mean, I would say we'd have to be flexible with them on that right now. Yep. Yep. Just to set a <clears throat> kind of a guide versus just leaving it open-ended. Um, and the plan would be to start construction early to mid-April. So weather permitting. <laughs> Other questions? I move approval. Motion no by second. Greg, seconded by Jim to approve the award of bids as recommended for the construction, the boring of the uh, utilities, so uh, for both. Discussion on the motion. We had a little feedback there, but I think we're over that, right? So, yeah. <laughs> any discussion on the motion? If not, we'll uh, move to a vote. Kyle, would you take the vote? Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Jim Lazinski? Yes. The motion passes. We'll move then to agenda item number five. This is the chip ceiling on various city streets. Uh, we have a resolution that would accept the bid and award the contract. I'll call in uh, City Engineer Director of Public Works, Jason Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Bids were received on March 5th for the chip ceiling project. We did receive five bids uh, as shown on the resolution. The apparent low was received from Asphalt Preservation Company of Detroit Lakes in the amount of $122,134.12. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $138,700. Uh, we do have $140,000 included in the street department's budget for this expense. Um, staff would recommend to award the contract uh, to Asphalt Preservation Company for $122,134.12 with a not to exceed expenditure of $140,000. Uh, that would allow the city staff to um, utilize all the funds as needed on potentially other, other routes. I would entertain any questions. Thank you, Jason. Questions for Jason? Mr. Uh, Mayor. Uh, Steve first. 
Um, Jason, just curious, what does the apparent low bid mean? Um, that's I mean, it question. is or it isn't. Yeah, yeah, that that is the low bid. Uh, we typically we typically say that at the bid opening when we're not sure of the numbers, but we are sure of the numbers. We have uh, reviewed it. They are the low uh, bid. Uh, we do believe they're a responsible bidder. Um, anything you'd like to add on that, Dennis? This change in the template for awarding these came at my recommendation because drawing, determining the lowest responsible bidder draws a conclusion. And I wanted to, to appear, it appears that they are the responsible bidder. Um, it leaves a door open if, if there is subsequent litigation involving the contract. I don't want the conclusion to say they are the responsible bidder. And in fact, they turned out not to be. So this is more of a legal change in the wording to keep the door open in case there is subsequent litigation. But you're right, it does appear that they are the low low bid. And I'd recommend that we approve the, as the language is proposed. So further, further question, if I can, on that, Dennis. Um, when it comes to counsel, and this just may be a point of order, but when it comes to counsel, I think that it's incumbent upon the council to have all the data presented to us fully. So the apparent low bid could be up until presentation to council because when we approve it, unless I'm wrong, and Kyle can certainly, or Mayor Burns can certainly correct me, but when we approve this, we're giving whoever that apparent low bid is the bid. And if they come in changing, then that's not fully transparent. I mean, I'm willing to, you know, entertain any pushback, but that's my thought. You know, if I if I may chime in, you know, maybe the the key there is that um, they are the low bid as the numbers are presented. But as Dennis mentioned in the resolution, you know, we mentioned that it appears that Asphalt Preservation Company is the lowest responsible responsible bidder and that's in case as dennis mentioned we run into any issues with the administration of the contract and we have we end up in uh litigation that we're not deeming them as responsible we could find them to be uh, uh irresponsible or not responsive at a later date is that correct dennis that's correct yes but steve is correct in that the uh when we the city council acts on the on the bid the contract is awarded and we're making that that decision based on the lowest responsible bid that we have presented you're basing it on the fact that it's the lowest yeah the lowest bidder whether it's responsible or not that i don't think that's a conclusion that the council can draw at this time they're the lowest bidder whether they're responsible or not is not before the council at this time define responsible responsible is based upon experience based upon the bid that's submitted and are they capable and competent of completing the contract as bid responsible comes with experience over a time period of working with these folks i believe right now they're the lowest bidder and we believe they are responsible based upon the information that was solicited in the bid process. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. So right. <clears throat> the question that I have then is, so this isn't standard language that we're going to have here and moving forward on, on receiving or approving all bids. This is specifically for this incident or instance because we're not sure about the uh, bidder that we're that we're going to award the bid to tonight based on we just don't know enough about them. Is am I clear on that? No. That's why I said it appears that they are the lowest responsible bidder. With the so, information we have right now, this is the recommended language from the League of Minnesota Cities bid solicitation language. Yes. Okay, so this would be standard if we only had the remaining bidders and this particular company was not the low bid because they had no bid. If we assumed they were out of this, we would still use this language for the remaining four bidders? Yes, it appears okay. that, yes. 
So yeah. this will be from here forward. This is the language we're going to use when we award bids for seal coating, for mill and overlays, for new street construction. This will be the standard language. It's yes. my recommendation to be a standard okay. language. Yeah. All right. And I just, just wanted to be clear. Uh, Councilman, if I may, I just want to clear clear this up too. We are comfortable with this contractor. Uh, our assistant city engineer has worked with this contractor in a different capacity with McLeod County. Uh, this contractor works predominantly central Minnesota and, and further north. We have no reason to believe this contractor cannot satisfy the contract. We we would certainly recommend approval. Sharon, sure, you have a point. I just want to clarify, and maybe the city attorney can confirm this as well. It's below the threshold for uh, the state bidding statute of 175,000. So for this particular instance, it doesn't really matter because you're below the state bidding threshold and they can, council can do whatever they want with any of these bids. That applies to this particular bid being below that threshold. But generally, yes, our construction contracts are above the mandatory bidding threshold. It's still my recommendation. Right. I would just add the word. It appears that they are responsive. Russ, you had a point? Just to ask, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to ask Jason, do we require in the RFPs that they furnish us uh, references that we could call other communities and see if they had problems? I'm just kind of curious with, with any of these contractors. We could always request references at any point in time if we felt like we uh, needed to do so. But in this instance, uh, Jesse Dean, our assistant city engineer, has worked with this contractor uh, while he was uh, the assistant in McLeod County. Um, they're a very large outfit. We have no reason to believe they can't complete the work. So I, I don't believe that a reference check is really necessary. I move so that we... Uh award the the bid to asphalt preservation company incorporated with a uh as uh, with their accept their bid as submitted with a uh, maximum of one hundred and forty thousand dollars for the work and i know that's based on the potential of adding additional uh streets for work second motion by craig seconded by jim discussion if not we'll move to a vote kyle mayor burns yes craig schaefer Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. Yeah. John DeKramer? Yes. Russell Bat? Yes. Jim Lazinski? Yes. And the motion passes. We'll move then to the consent agenda. We'll bring the items on the consent agenda up on the screen. And they include <laughs> consider the approval of a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for the convention of visitors bureau consider the approval of the sale of alcoholic beverages at the red baron arena in coordination with the fairbanks ice dogs hockey games at the wastewater treatment uh, facilities the improvement project consider the payment application to magni construction and consider a payment invoice to bolton and mink uh, also on the consent agenda, the storm structure outfall improvement projects, consider the approval of the plans and specifications and ordering the advertisement for bids. Uh, the Independence Park uh, sewer realignment project, consider the approval of the plans and specifications and order the advertisement for the bids. Consider the authorizations to declare vehicles as surplus property for the Marshall Police Department. Consider the authorization for the acceptance of a hazardous material emergency preparedness uh, grant for Southwest Chemical Assessment Team and to authorize the uh, Director of Public Safety, Jim Marshall, to administer the grant. And then finally, consider the approval of the bills and the project payments. So is there any item on the consent agenda any member of the council wants removed for purposes of separate discussion? Number seven. Any other item? If not, is there a motion to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda? So move. Motion by John, seconded by Craig. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote, Kyle. Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. Don Edblum? Don? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russell Bat? Yes. Jim Lazinski. 
Yes. The motion passes. Then item number seven, the uh, sale of alcoholic beverages at the Red Baron Arena in coordination with the Fairbanks Ice Dogs hockey games. Jim. Um, I really don't have a problem with it. The only issue I see is, could we possibly get the dates to line up on the application along with what they're asking for? Because if you look at the application, the dates are all in January and February. And what we're approving is March and April. Right. Kyle? Cor correct. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Um, this, the application that's in the packet is the original application. Um, I did not make them fill out another application since none of the information was changing, only the dates that they would be um, operating. So this would, this memo, this council action would be added to their original application. Um, so, but going forward, if another application is needed for, like, we can most certainly do that. That's not an issue. And I'm this is just that. a this is just a continuation of their existing license, then, correct? Correct. So, yeah, and I'm fine with that. I just I noticed on the application, if we could just even add the dates. I mean, Kyle, you could just add the dates on the application, couldn't you? I could. My intent was to take this background at memo and and paper clip it or staple it to the back of that application. And that wow. would work too, just so these dates yep. are tied to that application. And I'd make correct. the motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion by Jim, second by Craig. Discussion on the motion? I think the uh, one thing to point out, you know, this is seven additional games. That they weren't planning on it. We weren't planning on it, but it's good for the community to have that act, continued activity there. So This has been an awesome asset to the, to the community and to Red Baron and to, I mean, it's just, this has been good all around in my opinion. I've only been to a handful of the games, but this is really a good thing. And uh, somewhat related, I think it's relevant to this motion, but I, today I received a thank you note from someone from Alaska complimenting the community on the, the quality of the hospitality and the um, um, technology that allows them to participate in, in viewing the games from, uh, from Alaska and when it's here in Marshall. So, but good. Any other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move to a vote, Kyle. Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. Don Edblum? Yeah. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Jim Lazinski? Yes. Motion passes. So we'll move to agenda item number 14. This is the uh, state aid overlay projects. Uh, the action would be to consider the approval of the plans and specifications and ordering the advertisement for the bids. So once again, I'll call on city engineer, director of public works, Jason Anderson. Thank you, mayor. Um, this is an item that we started discussing last week at a work session or two weeks ago, rather. Um, the municipal state aid system is, a, or street system is a program that provides funding to municipalities uh, to help us construct and maintain community interest streets. Uh, we have a defined state aid network um, we receive an, an annual allotment of funds for maintaining and constructing on these routes. Um, currently, that annual allotment, allotment is around $800,000 per year. Um, as discussed at the work session, our current account balance is advanced by roughly two point, just shy of $2.9 million. Um, to improve the current condition on a number of our state aid routes while also paying back our advances with our annual allotment. City staff would propose to issue local bonds for a mill and overlay project on the state aid routes identified in front of you. Uh, we would make, we would propose to make bond payments from our state aid count account. To do this, we would annually request an advance of funds in the amount of the bond payment, which would be, uh, I think roughly over $300,000 per year. Uh, the current cost of this project would be $2.3 million, roughly. There'd be no general fund impact to this project, as all bond payments would come from the state aid account. Um, if there are any questions from the council, I'd entertain those. But today, we would ask that the council approve the plans and specs and, and authorize us to continue to move forward working with state aid and work towards uh, uh, bidding the project. Thank you, Jason. And um, 
you've been working closely with the state aid, MnDOT state aid engineer on the logistics of this also. So thank you for your work on this. Questions for Jason? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Don. Is, is this a, a, a total listing of our state aid roads that, that we are doing, or is this just a portion of it? Uh, thank you, Councilman. This is a, a portion of it. I think this is roughly seven miles of state aid routes, which uh, is a significant portion. Um, our total I don't have an exact number, but our total is somewhere around 16 or 17 miles of state aid routes in the city of Marshall. So it, it's a big it's a big chunk. And I should note that this project would also includes a significant amount of sidewalk pedestrian ramp improvements because everywhere we're doing a mill and overlay project, we're required to make all of the sidewalk crossings ADA compliant. So we'd also be utilizing state aid funds to make significant ADA improvements on our sidewalk network. I believe there's maybe some around 90 quadrants that would get improved. So it's a big undertaking on that front as well. Uh, just to follow up on that, so if we do this large project uh, as proposed, this year, do we then maybe in the next two or three years uh, do not uh, foresee using uh, a lot of the state aid funding that we are receiving? And in other words, we will be paying it back uh, over over time in the uh, in the bond. That is correct. So if we follow through with this plan and part of the reason we would do such a large project is uh, to minimize the number of advance requests that we have to make through the state aid office, um, take it and get it into one project, and then also try to um, take advantage of a larger project and hopefully drive the price down, uh, the unit price for, for asphalt. Uh, we're hoping that we would get uh, a very good price on the paving. We have had good prices on the bituminous materials this year in general, so it's a really good time to do it from that aspect. Um, but yeah, we would we would try to limit the amount of state aid expenses we had for the next handful of years. And as part of our discussions with the state of Minnesota, uh, the director of SALT and our district eight state aid engineer, part of our discussions was trying to outline what we saw as future upcoming expenses out of the fund and try to show how that projected and, and how our balance uh, was recovering. And this certainly helps by bonding locally and making smaller annual payments. We're able to pay back our advance by around a half a million dollars every year. Uh, so it, it allows us to get some improvements that, that we think will, will be very nice in our system while also still drawing out of our negative balance. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. The, uh, or, and to Don's uh, first point, it, it probably would be a good idea to um, distribute the full state aid map or maybe even post it on our website somewhere if it's not already there, Jason. We, we can do other, that. Other questions? If not, you have the recommendation, I'd entertain a motion. I would move to approve the resolution. I will second. Motion by Don, seconded by John. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote pile. Would you take the vote? Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. John Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ LeBat? No. Jim Lozinski? Yes. And the motion passes. Agenda item number 15. Consider the approval of a two-way left turn. Um, two-way left turn, uh, the striping, and the resolution for the signage on Lyon Street and Southview Drive. Once again, Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is an item we've talked about uh, a few times at a couple different council meetings. Uh, we've talked about Southview Drive, and we've talked about Lyon Street on a couple different meetings, and we've also gone to PIT committee and had some discussions. Um, I think I'll start, I'll just give a brief description again. Um, and for Southview Drive, um, SEH uh, engineering consultant performed a traffic analysis of our roadway network around the middle school and the new elementary school 
prior to the construction of the new school to better accommodate the future projected traffic patterns. SEH had a report that recommended this two-way left turn lane striping configuration on Southview between uh, Saratoga Street and Main Street. Uh, to accommodate that striping pattern, we would propose to remove parking from the north side of Southview Drive along this stretch. Uh, and we would also remove the painted on street, on street bike trails um, from Saratoga to East Southview Court. Um, the, paint, the bike trail will be accommodated north of the street by the school's project or through the school's project. From East Southview Court to 59 or Main Street, we would propose to remove parking on both sides of the road and leave the painted on street trail at this point in time. Uh, on uh, East Lyon, in the, the driving factor is, is similar in trying to better accommodate the, the traffic movements around the school busy times. Uh, we would propose to remove parking from Adobe Road to Minnesota 23 and keep the painted on street bike trails in that portion. Um, both sites will be getting a um, improved pedestrian crossing for the schools, as you can kind of see in that exhibit. I think we included some, some of the handouts, um, but they'll be in 2022, we'll be getting improved pedestrian crossings. And this project will uh, allow us to start by moving the, the, the striping and then the, the pedestrian improvement will fit right in when we do the medians. Um, Council's input when we came to the committee and to council was that we should be reaching out and informing the residents. So we did send letters to uh, all residents affected, right, directly adjacent to these environments. They received uh, some newsletters and uh, project newsletter and description of what was going to happen. And they were, be they were given our phone number and contact information if they had any questions or concerns. We did receive very minimal uh, response. I think we received one response from each section um, and uh, no real negative response. I think one individual was concerned if there was any sort of change to property values with this project. And uh, we, don't, we don't believe that there is, but that's, uh, that's our opinion. Um, in addition to the striping, we would be asking the council to consider passing a resolution for um, removing parking as indicated on the striping plan that our ordinance 74-26 does require council action to take parking off the streets so we'd be asking for that as well as this um, we would propose to stripe this configuration upon completion of the mill and overlay project that we just discussed in the prior item so we would include striping in these sections for sure as part of those projects uh, if there are any questions i can i can try to help address that Thank you, Jason. Questions? Uh, just a comment first, Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yes, Craig. And we did have a good discussion about this at the PINT uh, <clears throat> committee meeting. And like Jason said, the one primary concern was to make sure that we communicate the change in parking with residents. And it's also noted that the affected property, there is other on-street parking, <clears throat> you know, fairly adjacent, just not directly on um, Southview. So um, I think this is a this is a really good plan and I think that it meets well with the changing conditions at the school and some of the other things that are you know going to have increased traffic in the in the neighborhood. Now I think this is a, a real good move forward for for pedestrian and travel safety and the hopefully the little bit of the narrowing and separating will kind of slow traffic down a little bit too. Any other uh, input from the Council. If not, I'd entertain a motion on the recommendation. Recommendation uh, one we'll, and and I also would like to move. Can we move recommendation two at the same time? Yes, we can. And I would like to do that. I will second both. Motion by Craig, seconded by John for recommendation one and recommendation two as outlined and recommended. Discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote, Kyle. Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Steve Meister? Don Edblum? Yeah. 
John De John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Kim Lazinski? Yes. Motion passes. Agenda item number 16 is consider appointment to various boards, commission, bureaus, and authorities. The uh, uh, the appointment is for the diversity uh, um, and inclusion committee, equity and inclusion committee. And the recommendations you have on the screen, I'll read the recommendations, and then I'll call on uh, council member D. Kramer, who's the liaison, to not only uh, explain this process, because it's a little bit different, because this is a new committee, and there was many applicants, and so it's really in the formative stage, and there's also a number of other members that are standing committee seats. So, uh, but the action tonight that is recommended is that uh, Don Robertson be appointed to a term that will end May 31st, 2023. George Taylor to a term that will end May 31st, 2022. Jan uh, Tofty to a term May 31st, 22 will expire. Marcy Hemeyer to a term that will expire May 31st, 2023. And Monica Delamontas to a term that will expire May 31st, 2022. Councilman DeKramer. Yes, a couple of things uh, worth explaining. Uh, at a previous meeting, we went through a number of uh, appointments and at the time just really had two openings left. Uh, since then, a number of the individuals that were appointed that evening have moved to a standing position representing the organizations that they work for, such as uh, SMSU, uh, uh, the school district. Um, we've got, uh, I want to say, five or six standing positions that uh, are non-voting positions, but uh, do represent various organizations where the organizations enter uh, or give us the name of who they want to represent. Uh, we also had a co-chair that is, uh, since this has started, that is moving away and uh, uh, she has asked to be replaced. So out of there, there was five openings that were created. Um, the selections were made out of, uh, I think, a practice. At one time, we had like 28 to 30 that were uh, showing interest in this committee, uh, in this commission. So it was doing some narrowing and down. We tried to make selections based on the type of committee we are looking at a good selection of male, female, um, various entities, uh, people of color. Um, and, you know, we've got, uh, I guess one is gonna make note of uh, Marcy Hemeyer, which is well known to Marshall and in the area, but works in Cottonwood. Uh, so we've got a connection with businesses uh, schools, uh, various organizations within the community. And so we tried to be very deliberate in the selection of the applicants and unfortunately had to turn down many good applicants uh, that we'd really like to have on the committee. But, um, and we hope at some point if there's subcommittees or things to work on that those people would be interested in helping us out at that point. But uh, this ends up being the list that was developed, and uh, I would recommend this uh, uh, or make the motion to approve these individuals for the uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Commission. Okay, motion by John. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Craig. Now, discussion on the motion. First off, you know, the uh, John, thank you, and also the uh, members of the committee have really put in a lot of time in trying to uh, get the formative uh, stage of this uh, commission uh, really in, in a good foundation. So that's good. Kyle, you have the list of the standing members, I believe, for council's information. You want to just list those? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the standing positions that the uh, commission had, uh, had identified at our last meeting uh, last Friday 
would be Marshall Public Schools, Southwestern Center for Independent Living, Southwest Health and Human Services, SMSU, Prairie Home Hospice, the Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, Avera Marshall, um, SMSU again, but representing the student body president or their designee. And maybe I'll back up the SMSU appointment would be the SMSU president. Um, continuing on United Community Action Partnership and adult basic education. Okay, thank you. Um, other discussion on the motion? So, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Steve. I've actually been appraised of others who have, I mean, those those positions that are fixed. Do we have names for those positions yet or, or not? Kyle. Yes, Mr. Uh, Council Member uh, Meister, we do have uh, appointments to those com um, to those standing positions at this time. Sure. There's um, one position that we do need confirmation on, um, but we are we're certain it's going to go through. Okay. Okay. The reason the reason I ask is I had an incumbent talk to me about a particular person who would be apparently had applied for the position. I don't see her on this sheet, so maybe in another spot. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody was there. Good. So Kyle, you once everything's confirmed with understanding members, you'll you can send that list out too. Correct. We will be communicating with the at large and standing positions position members tomorrow morning and we'll be inviting everybody the whole commission to our next regular meeting i believe on the 19th or that whatever that friday okay thank you other discussion on the motion uh i have a couple of questions or not really questions but we're approving five people here that we've seen no information on it, and i know that we've brought this up before you know you said there's 28 applicants give or take um, is there a reason why the council doesn't see these applicants or who they are just to kind of get an idea of who they are? And the second thing is, as you read through those standing um, positions, I did not recognize any of those organizations that re would represent the developmentally challenged population that we have here in Marshall. I believe that population should also be included. Thank you, council member. Those are great questions. Um, well, maybe I'll take your standing position question or uh, statement first. So it would be to this list that I had read off was a combination of, uh, it was overwhelming actually, overwhelming majority uh, were businesses that had reached out to us. Um, the only person, the only entity that I believe we reached out to that did not submit an application was Marshall Public Schools. Um, that, that, I, that was a big part of the reason why the list is the way it is is right now but we wrote the ordinance wrote the bylaws in a way to so that the commission at any time can add standing standing positions um, to the commission uh, so we are um, speaking on behalf of the commission i don't want to do that but we are more than open to adding additional standing positions um, at any time uh, and then to your at-large positions with the applications um, with this the we reason you didn't see applications is that is really the way we've been handling applications for boards and commissions uh, for the last year. The liaison and the mayor uh, review those appointments. Um, and I will go a step further with these appointments that are being recommended tonight. Um, we, the appointed commission, previously appointed commission had reviewed all of these applications um, quite thoroughly um, in and had put a lot of meaningful thought into the to the applicants tonight. So um, we can most certainly work on changing up and, and getting back into a more normal uh, interview process that the council is used to and, and comfortable with, uh, with appointments going forward. But um, vetting or approving, reviewing applications, I can assure you that that was done um, quite thoroughly. The, and I'll add to that, the, um, thank you, Kyle. The, uh, you know, the majority of our boards and commissions, the terms um, expire at the end of May. So the majority of the people are either up for reappointment or open positions at the end of May, which means that in the month, starting in the month of April, we'll be receiving applications. And then, um, you know, the normal interview cycle would happen, you know, sometime prior to that, the term expiration at the end of May. And I would really like to get back to our normal practice, and I think we're close to that. The uh, in terms of, and Dr. Meister can respond, but the uh, 
in terms of you know where we're at with the health and safety in the community and even if we have to do it by by distance i think we can do that in a safe manner so if there's a mechanism on you know getting back to what had been our pre-pandemic practice of interviews receiving applicants and interviews for appointments um you know i would like to get that what back to that practice um for the the terms that will expire at the end of may Mr. Mayor, i would uh share and then john and maybe kyle specified this but i believe one of the standing positions is southwest center for independent living yes yes okay and that those that does reach people with disabilities in southwest minnesota so there is some representation there and i don't know if that helps answer uh one of the questions so john uh, just my addition was uh uh Kyle made the comment uh, uh, that uh, the Marshall School District was the only one that did not in advance uh, make a request. And at the time um, we made the appointments to the committee, we appointed uh, Sarah Renchi, who's a school board member, to the commission. At this point, she is taking a standing position. It's still a little bit. I'm not sure if it's been finalized that uh, she didn't want to speak on behalf of the school board, but uh, uh, she's taking that position unless they decide otherwise. Uh, so the reason that school board did not, or the Marshall School District did not reach out at the time is because they felt we're already on it and covering it, so. Correct, and in fact, commission member will actually um, remain an at-large member and the school district is appointing an additional Okay. Additional person. Other discussion on the motion? Good discussion. Um, I really think that we should review as a council with this being a new commission. I, I cannot support just having two people pick these. I think that these should be more reviewed by the council as this goes forward. I would say that yeah, this is not just two people that made the selection. This was selected by the members of the uh the d uh dei commission that uh went through this uh like kyle said in detail to make sure that we had a good cross reference of various cultures within the city represented so this was uh, just so you do know um you know this was beyond just two of us or two people making the selection there was uh, more like eight or nine people involved in the selection process. And it needs to go beyond cultures because we also have an LGBT community that I hope is represented on this board. Yeah, there's, uh, I think, uh, and that was part of the discussion. We could have quite a long list of standing membership and uh, the, the feeling is, this is a start at this point. Uh, we want to get going, get organized, get some things moving. And at the same time, uh, it is the intent to have subcommittees for various uh, projects or items that we take up uh, issues with. And in that process, um, you know, we'd ask for other ones. Uh, I'd also point out, uh, you know, another one missing, which we talked about is the uh, you know, the police department, because they should be on here. But uh, again, we just have a lot of positions, uh, a lot of interest. And uh, I think we are up to, what are we right now? Nine plus about 15, 16, 18 members on the commission and trying not to get to uh, uh, an unruly number of uh, members to the commission. Other discussion on the motion? Mr. Mayor? Yeah, not, yes, Steve. So I am also kind of in favor with uh, Council Member Lazinski, but also understand that this is a new commission. I think that we need to start small. You know, if right now we have 15, 18 people on the commission. 
Uh, currently, it's going to find a, we're going to find difficulty finding a place for them all to meet, especially given COVID conditions. Um, I think that starting with what we have is good with the, always the opportunity to expand. And again, we want to include everybody on this, but the problem with including everybody is you get to such a huge number of people um, that we need to kind of balance uh, balance the numbers of people and the various groups with um, the uh, group dynamics and uh, of efficacy of meetings and what's the agenda going to be because you get a group with 18 people and they all have things that they want to talk to you're going to be talking about meetings that are a long time and then interest is going to wane and drop off and it's going to become an ineffective committee i don't want to see that i want to see an effective committee so our city can grow with a well-represented um diverse community you see other discussion on the motion if not, we'll move to a vote. Kyle, would you take the vote? Mayor Burns? Yes. Craig Schaefer? Yes. Steve Meister? Yes. Don Edblum? Yes. John DeKramer? Yes. Russ Labatt? Yes. Jim Lazinski? No. And the motion does pass. We'll move then to agenda item number 17, uh, Commission uh, Board Liaison Report. Uh, Craig? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mine have not met. Steve? Likewise, no reports. Don? Uh, the Planning Commission tomorrow night does not have an agenda. And uh, the Public Housing Commission met last night. So it was good to meet those people for the first time, other than Mark Farrell, who I've known for many years. But um, uh, they just had a normal meeting and everything is good over there. Okay. Um, from my part, the um, um, the Southwest Regional Development Commission meets uh, this Thursday. Their uh, committee, their revolving loan fund committee, met Monday of this week. Actually, approved two uh, revolving loan funds: one for a grocery store in a small community, one for an assisted living center in a small community. So that committee uh, remains active. The um, area Transportation Partnership, I represent the Southwest Regional Development Commission on the Area Transportation Partnership and chair that group. The council will recall that City of Marshall had two funding applications in there and Jason Anderson in his report, he can give the details on this. One was for the sidewalk, a grant to assist the bike trail sidewalk um, expansion from C Street down alongside the um, library and the new elementary school to Southview Street and then crossing Southview and then continuing over to uh, Highway 59 to connect with the existing bike trail over there. Um, that was rated um, in of, there was, I believe there's 11 applicants or applications for this funding that was submitted. This project ranked the highest of any and um, was selected for funding along with one other project that was fully funded and then a project in Candioi County that was partially funded. So, um, so my compliments to the staff that worked on that application and did really a nice job on that. The other was uh, funding app uh, request to MnDOT was for cost participation, additional cost participation for the 2025 Highway 19 reconstruction project in Marshall. And that was also granted. Um, and again, Jason, heads up, you can give details on that when it comes to your, your report. John? Okay, the Economic Development Authority and Marshall Municipal Utilities did not meet since our last meeting. Uh, we just took action on the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Commission. Uh, just a note on the water treatment facility, uh, things are moving along well there. Uh, there's portions of the project that are starting to get activated and put into use. Uh, it is expected that uh, probably within the next few weeks, um, the city will start softening water. It will be a progression, so it isn't a sudden change. 
They will slowly start softening the water more and more over the next several months. And that's to uh, avoid any problems with piping or uh, anything like that. So it'll be a slower transition. Um, <clears throat> I would say uh, Ways and Means also met uh, last week and uh, we had a good discussion on the storage containers. At this point, uh, staff is uh, taking all the points that we wanted to and incorporating those into the ordinance change, which uh, we may be seeing here very soon. Uh, that right. the Legislative Ordinance Committee? Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, one or the other. Sorry, I got them mixed up. Uh, then Ways and Means was the one that took the uh, the uh, uh, activating the uh, fireman scholarship program again, which uh, is the um, uh, available for students of present and past firemen that uh, are going on to secondary education and being able to apply. By writing, so that has been initiated. Well, certainly, yeah, I guess I got my committees mixed up. So, okay, they're both within two days, so they all kind of run together. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, Russ, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only one of mine that met was the library board, and, and that was last night. So, uh, the director has recommended, and the board approved that they move uh, from mainly open to cautiously open. And what that's going to mean is that the library is going to now going to start opening each weekday until 5.30. So that's uh, one hour longer during the week, Wednesday through Friday. They've also approved the uh, opening of the branches on a very uh, limited amount starting either the end of, very end of March or first week in April. There's a lot of cleaning to be done and, and refreshing of materials. So that's good news for the branches of those in Cottonwood and Ballotton. Uh, they recommend, uh, and we approved again last night, the time being that people can only spend 30 minutes in the library and that's going to continue. But they're opening up the children's wing and things like that with appointment with smaller groups. And, and uh, just hopefully as things improve, uh, they can, Michelle and their staff can continue to open up the library more and more. On a, on a bit, a little bit of positive news regarding Plum Creek uh, library system, I'll just read the memo that we received. Uh, the Regional Library Basic System Support Improvement Bill will be chief authored by Senator Mark Jan Johnson, who will be East Grand Forks, and Representative Dan Wagenhoek from St. Cloud. The bill would add approximately $2 million a year to the $13.57 million a year in state funding that supports the national, or the, excuse me, supports the regional public library system. So if that goes through with the, with the anticipation that it will, uh, that's good news for Plum Creek and, and also good news for Marshall. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Russ. Uh, Jim? Uh, the only one in mind that met was City Hall. Uh, we toured City Hall, it's coming along nicely. And then we did have a second meeting on furniture. I'll let Sharon kind of touch base on that in her group or in her, her discussion because it's more of a staff decision. We, we as a committee kind of left it up to the staff to decide on some chairs and she can elaborate on that. Other than that, I have nothing. Okay, thank you, Jim. We'll move then to uh, council member individual items. Uh, Jim, let's start on your end tonight. Uh, weather's nice, spring is here and um, I, I want to comment, we, we gave a tax abatement to a house earlier in the meeting. Um, housing in Marshall is going to look very positive this year. I think we're going to be in the double digits for housing, which is a good sign of, of our economy if we can get the lumber. There is a shortage of, of a lot of materials. But the, uh, we should see a lot of tax abatements coming up, so maybe we'll have to look at that program at the end of the year. But housing is rebounding, and with its spring out, just watch out for kids running around through the neighborhood because um, I have a lot of them that run around, my, run around my house and never look for cars. So other than that, I, that's all I have. Thank you, Jim. Russ? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not sure if Director of Public Safety Jim Marshall is still online or not, but within the last couple of weeks, I've been able to pick up my granddaughter from the Marshall Middle School. And I know the weather's been cold and, and uh, I, I think the situation will improve. But as people... Uh, pull into the Marshall Middle School parking lot. There's usually two lanes that that go around to the gymnasium area to pick up, you know, their kids. What's happening is that those two lanes are when you, you, it's extending out onto uh, Saratoga Drive. 
all the way almost down to South View Drive, single lane. And thereby, if a traffic, a car or something is coming from the south heading north, uh, they're also running into people that are coming from the north trying to take a left hand turn into the parking lot. So there is quite a congestion there. And, you know, I think with the warm weather, that might improve because you're going to see more kids riding the bikes. But I think uh, that's something that we should all be aware of when, when they open up the middle school or when they open up the new elementary school, that I think we might have some of the same situation with people going, you know, turning left only into going into that elementary school and then coming out and, and again, going right to, or north on, on Saratoga and then trying to get into that middle school. But it could be a, a dangerous situation. And fortunately, I don't believe they've had any incidents. They've got crossing guards there that are doing a great job, but just to make the public aware that slow down. And if you don't, if you're not going into the parking lot to pick up kids, please slow down because there's lots of traffic going in and out. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. John? Nothing. Okay. Um, Craig? Craig? Threw me a curveball there. I wasn't ready for that. Uh. <clears throat> um, geez, Jim, I can't believe. So Jim was my early wake-up call today, which I really appreciated because he made sure my wife didn't oversleep. And it was kind of a, a really good announcement because like Jim pointed out earlier, the weather's gotten nice. And I want to say that we're getting dividends already from the second street sweeper. And uh, Jim and I talked about it. He observed them early today. Um, I talked to, to Jesse in Jason's office this morning and asked him to also pass it on to our street department. But they were out with both sweepers running hard. I know the forecast tonight and tomorrow is for rain, so they're getting a lot of the salt and sand off the streets. And um, I just think it really helps us with all of the stormwater management and our it plays and uh, pairs up very well with our chloride reduction project to minimize the amount of chlorides going into the Redwood River and thus, you know, down down the riverways into the Minnesota and Mississippi. And uh, so it just it's just a good positive thing forward. It'll also uh, by doing this quick and getting especially this, the first spring sweeping of the winter sand and salting that keeps our roads and intersections safe, um, we should also save on maintenance of our uh, stormwater catch basins and, and stormwater ponds. So uh, just hats off to, to everybody. And again, uh, welcome spring, you know, couldn't come too soon for me. So thanks and everybody stay safe. Okay, thanks, Craig. Steve? So, I have been participating in um, a uh, city planning um, meeting and we are going through consultants uh, request for proposals, uh, ranking them. Uh, we're going to have another meeting here, um, I believe tomorrow, uh, to firmly uh, pick one. Um, you know, this is an important thing as we look forward to our 20 year comprehensive city plan and um, it's exciting because this is where we want to go and use this document as a living document that we're going to uh, build and um, use to guide us to where we want to go. So uh, more to come on that as we set things up. The other thing is um, putting my doctor hat on. We've got a lot moving on vaccines. Lyon County needs to be just aware that we are really ahead of the of the game. We are now going, uh, we've saturated to 75 and older. We just don't have anybody left to vaccinate uh, who wants to be vaccinated. Um, and if there are people who are uh, wanting to be vaccinated, please just reach out and let us know. Um, let your providers know, go to a pharmacy. There's lots of ways to get it, but we have saturated that. So we are ready to move on the 65 and older. And as of today, the governor opened it up so that we are now in category 1B, which uh, opens it up even further, um, obviously the 65 and older, uh, but the next phase would be um, people all the way down to 50 with, with the qualifying medical condition. So keep going what we're going. It's exciting to see the CDC guidelines, uh, but remember still to wear your masks and stay away from big, huge crowds. And that's all I have to say, Mayor. Hey, thank you, Steve. And Don. And I'm going to echo the uh, the comp plan meeting. We had one the other day, uh, yesterday, and uh, there will be another one or two. And then uh, 
we should be able to come up with a recommendation here fairly quickly. Uh, a lot of good candidates, though. So uh, we're doing our due diligence. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll then move then to um, a staff report, starting with City Administrator Sharon Hanson. Sharon. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, thanks for the update on the comp plan from Council Members Ed Bloom and Meister. Uh, we're hoping we can bring it back to the next um, Council meeting, but at the same time, I know that you have both done a thorough job of selecting the right consultant and are still in that process. The Aquatic Center request for proposals uh, ended on March 4th. We did receive 13 proposals from different architectural engineering firms. We're gonna meet next week. Uh, again, we hope to bring it on March 23rd, but it may be that first week in April. Uh, we wanna maybe take a little bit more time um, based on that number that we received. Uh, City Hall, just an uh, uh, update and the committee members probably are not aware of this, but we're gonna meet again on the 15th for City Hall Committee. And at that time, uh, we'll have Ingen present a draft, uh, draft designs for the plaza. And we've also, as a staff, engaged Preston Stensrud in on this conversation. And we are hoping that our own city staff with the leadership of Preston could do a majority of the work to um, save some costs, whatever that may be. I know we want to implement some parking as part of, part of the plaza, so we won't uh, be able to do that ourselves necessarily, but uh, hopefully some of that landscaping we'll be able to do. We uh, have had some discussions with the school district on the Maytech daycare situation. Uh, there was a thought process that if we would route the funding through community education, that there would somehow be savings and or additional funding. I have not seen that uh, or believe that to be the case, but the school is still continuing discussions. There might be a private interest to, um, to at least provide daycare um, to get them to where they need to be, whatever that future is down the road. Our division directors at our uh, staff meetings have reviewed the strategic plan that was uh, adopted in early 2020. We had a lot of challenges with some of the items that was in strategic plan because of COVID. At the same time, we did a lot in 2020 considering. And so um, I'm hoping that on March 23rd, I can do a review with the council on, on where we're at with some reaching some of our strategic plan goals. And uh, just a short uh, update on um, vaccinations. The Merit Center actually tomorrow is gonna host a vaccination site that is put on by Southwest Health and Human Services. They have 500 vaccines to give out and they have all the slots filled. And I know Dr. Meister would know this, but um, if you look at state reporting, uh, and, and this has been a question in my mind, are we using all the vaccine? Uh, they actually do report that at the state level. And Lyon County has not wasted any vaccine. We have uh, no wasted vaccine reported in Lyon County. So I just wanted to add that to, uh, to some of the other comments that was made by Dr. Meister. And that's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Sharon. Any questions for Sharon? If not, Jason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll tag on with uh, Councilman Schaefer. Uh, we did get the two street sweepers in operation this week. We finally got the, finally, actually it's very quick. We got the new one in very quickly and um, got insurance on it right away and we're able to get them both out this week. And I. Early indications are from our uh, public waste superintendent, Dean Kudrin. Uh, they think that this will be extremely uh, handy and it's been working out very well. So uh, thank you to the council for uh, that direction to go the route of keeping two units and put them into play. You know, staff wasn't even really considering that at the beginning. Uh, I think it's the right move and I think it's really gonna give us a lot of flexibility and, and help us get a lot done in a hurry 
because usually in the spring when you want to pick that stuff up you've got a very short window to get that when the weather turns before it starts to wash away and like councilman schaefer pointed out you start to fill in the catch basins and then wash it into the river and, and that's no good either so uh, we think that'll be very helpful so uh, we're appreciative of the council's efforts there um, you've probably also noted around town this week in the last three four days the river uh, level through the community has been quite high. Um, just want to let the council know that that is something that the city public works department is monitoring and we've been a little more active today and breaking up some ice buildups at some of our river bridge crossings and trying to make sure that uh, things are operating smoothly. Um, the river at the gauge isn't very high. That's not an issue. Um, we actually weren't really expecting this because it's such a it was such a dry late summer and fall and we didn't have a lot of accumulation over the winter but with how fast things uh thawed there's just some ice having trouble getting out of the way so uh we've been paying attention to that and and um, hopefully things are looking better tomorrow um as the mayor pointed out early indications are that the city is in line to receive quite a bit of grant money in 2025 which is really exciting um the C Street Southview Trail that we brought to council for resolution of support, I suppose a couple months ago, uh, that one is being recommended for award at the next ATP meeting. Um, currently it's being pushed forward at the uh, review level and staff level. The uh, District 8 ATP will officially vote, I believe at the first meeting in April. And um, that, that's great news. That's the $392,500 grant for quite a bit of trail and a, a really nice connection that's a joint project along with uh, the school district and the school district is paying half of the participating match which is ninety-eight thousand dollars, and the city's paying the other half it's not quite half and half but just generally it's it's half and half a uh, lot well, of good Jay, work yeah, go ahead Jay, jason if i just jump in there um as you said that's 2025 um state fiscal year funding which could actually mean 2024 construction. Correct. Yes. Uh, thank you for that clarification, Mayor. Uh, that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> I was just going to point out a lot of good work by uh, some city staff on that. Uh, Assistant City Engineer Jesse Dean and Amanda Beckler from our Community Services Department put in a lot of effort and did a nice job presenting and put together a really strong application. Um, this was uh, the most applications that uh, state MnDOT staff can remember having in the TA program in a single year and for us our project to come out on top that's a testament to their great work um, and then the other project that the mayor mentioned was our college drive 2025 reconstruct we have applied for federal funds for that project through the ATP as well um, early indications are are strong that we'll 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 have a pretty large award for that right now they're recommending eight hundred and thirty two thousand dollars um, I look for that to come down a little bit. And that's mostly because we'll be working hard with MnDOT to ensure that we're only including grant eligible items. We'd hate to take away from other communities and counties in District 8 um, at award time because we weren't uh, very accurate in what's an eligible expense or not. I think we have a few things in there that are not, so that may come down some. But nonetheless, it'll be a very large grant for college drive which will help us pay for the project as we talk about things like our uh fully advanced or not fully but significantly advanced state aid account and uh, finding funds to pay for that project will be important so uh really excited about that so just uh wanted to point that out and thank you for bringing that up mayor i wasn't probably going to talk about that but it's a it's a good thing to to mention to the council uh, any questions i can answer them otherwise i think that's all i've got question for jason yeah, both of those projects are are slated for action by the ATP at I believe the April 9th meeting. So, uh, so they should be considered um, the apparent recommendations at this point. So, for funding, <laughs> um, Dennis, I have nothing. Questions for Dennis? If not, the remaining items on the agenda. You see the administrative brief for your review. The information items, including the building permits and the listing of upcoming meetings. Is there any other item to a business to come before the Marshall City Council this evening? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? 
So moved. Motion by Second. Steve. Seconded by Craig to adjourn discussion. If not, by voice vote. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. We are adjourned. Have a good evening.